So, I've recently upgraded the alternator in my GQ Patrol from the factory was 70 amp to a 100 amp unit. The charge cable from the alternator to the battery is pretty piss weak, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's really, it's, it's, I think it, personally, I think it looks borderline for the factory output. So in this video, we're going to upgrade that uh, charge cable. Now, if you haven't seen the last video, uh, it was basically the whole process of changing an alternator out. So if you'd like to know how to do that, go check it out. I'll throw a card up the top there. Uh, go have a look and come back to this. So we're going to pick up where we left off in the last video. Hope you enjoy and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comments below, all that stuff. Head over to the shop, get yourself a hat. It really helps the channel. Anyway, let's get into it. All right, so that main install of the alternator is done. So now I'm going to run the alternator charge cable. So You've got two courses of action you can do here. You can either run it up along the firewall and back around, or you could go where the original harness goes for this particular one. They may change later on, I don't know. Uh, it's basically up under this uh, panel along here in front of the radio and back out uh, to the battery. So that is the, the route that I'm gonna take. Uh, it's probably a, a little bit more difficult but I think it's going to be kind of a bit more hidden and out of the way. So I just think it's probably a bit cleaner install. First course of action is I need a lug on the end of this cable. Now for this sort of size, you'll need uh, some crimpers to do the job. Uh, I've got a cheap set, they'll work with that. What's that? There we go, one crimp. Now I'm going to put some uh, heat shrink over this just tip, but I'm also going to wrap a. I'm going to put some extra protection around the cable as well. So this is a uh, Tex. It's called Tech Flex. Uh, it is. I consider it's a lot better than the old uh, uh, corrugated plastic bay wrap you get. Uh, it is more expensive, uh, that is a downside, but it's a lot more flexible. Uh, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to work with at uh, times, but I'm basically going to wrap that up there and we'll heat shrink that in to lock it in place. So essentially this stuff is, you can just open it up. You can get tools to to apply on this, but for one-off jobs like this, it's it's not that big a deal to be honest. Alrighty, so there's the end result, all heat shrunk, and got the Tech Flex on there. So uh, that's what I love about this. You can put the Tech Flex into the heat shrink, and it sort of holds it in place. Real, real nice stuff. Now, like I said earlier, uh, this stuff you can get a uh, like an applicator tool to put this. Uh, Take it on, but uh, it's a, just about persist with it and uh, you'll get it on. Alright, ready to go in. So I've got this cable sort of coming around, basically following the original. And I'm just playing that sort of cable tight to it. So I'll give myself a bit of, a bit of slack for that to work. I can always pull it back. Right like that, I'll tighten that up. Just basically keep it in that orientation, I think. Uh, and then all this stuff can, the original stuff can just be sort of Press together on that original uh, loom restraint. The rest of this can just be all sort of cable tied together here and that should work fine and I'll just work my way back with it through the loom. All right, with that all on, we can cable tie, start cable tying this on the onto the loom all the way back to the battery. 
All right, so the fun part of running all this cabling is all done. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So starting at the alternator, running out and cable tied to this loom. Hopefully the light is okay, but she runs up and around uh, the factory loom, up through holes in here. Now you can just see where I've sort of cable tied. It's basically tucked up under this ledge, this lip, back through a little hole in here. Now I've had to loosen off the uh, washer bottle just in order to get a bit better access to fit the cable in through this factory little hole play here. Uh, it's basically comes up in that hole. Uh, runs just along some existing cables along the front here and then out to the front here. So this will just come around and terminate back onto the lug. Now, in order to wire this up, I'm gonna use this lug here to replace this original, well, I shoot this original old lug. Uh, this is called a uni lug. So there's the name there. Uh, it's basically just a lug with two terminals on. Uh, quite a handy little thing and it's got plastic bay cover over it. Uh, if you've got a vehicle that uh, this terminal, uh, positive terminal can't be unbolted, uh, it does have another little terminal that you can just sort of screw onto that spot and you can buy, put your lug straight on that and still have an extra, an extra outlet. So I'm gonna put all the original factory stuff on one side, so obviously, this is going to be fused as well. This is why I'm coming on using these terminal mounted uh, fuse blocks. So it's basically bolted straight on there. There's the fuse. Uh, don't have to do any extra connections. It's just all ready there, ready to go. And that'll just hang off the edge of that. Uh, I don't have a the two up one because I'm going to run one for the alternator input into this. So the second one I'm going to use for a, a main feed off to a distribution. Uh, probably just going to be another fuse panel here. I will have that so I can run an Anderson plug down the rear and probably a separate feed inside the cabin for auxiliary stuff there and probably uh, my second battery feed. I'm thinking I'm going to go a lithium in the back or in, inside the cab. So yeah, that's where that's sitting. But for the meantime, let's get this lug off and we'll start lining all this stuff up so we can put that crimp terminal on. So this is the final result. So we've got the all the factory starting wires. Uh, there's a few accessories and stuff that've been added over the years. Uh, Obviously, got this one that I'll exp expand onto later on. And for now, this is the, the alternator uh, charge wire that goes in. So that's a 100 amp fuse. Uh, what the MRFB fuse or something like that, uh, if you're looking for these. Uh, yeah, basically that fuse holder sits nice, nicely there. There's just enough clearance between the hood lining and the top here. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I might just do a clearance check to make sure this cable fits. So let's have a look at that now. So it's just touching there a little bit. So I'm just gonna try and bring that cable down a little bit. Uh, I may even uh, just change it to come out the back. Uh, whether you don't have this side of the uh, the bonnet that's pressing down on it, so we'll have a play around. So I'm just going to try how it fits with it on the back and coming out back towards the brake booster. So let's give it a try. Ooh, show me what you got. Hey, look, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that clear is no problem. It, it is looking a little close to the top, but uh, there's lots of room within that uh, 
that bonnet sound deadening, so that's got quite a bit of movement before there's any metal uh, above that. So I'm not really worried. Like that's just kissing on the top of that by uh, that cover, so that shouldn't be too much an issue at all, I don't think. Uh, probably something I didn't mention uh, anywhere within that video. So in order to get from that alternator around to the front of that terminal, uh, that's pretty much exactly three meters of cable. So if you, my original thought was to run it down the front of the loom uh, of the battery, uh, I just didn't quite have enough cable for that. So yeah, it is what it is. If you want to follow it down the other way, you'll probably need a little bit more. I'd say probably, probably at least 3.3 meters, I would guess. Uh, I haven't measured around the back of the firewall and it would probably probably be a similar distance just looking at it. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you if you need to upgrade the cabling from your alternator to your battery on your GQ. Like you're saying in that in the earlier segment there, the factory wiring is really look, I wouldn't say it's the best from the word go, even with the factory output. So I'm gonna give this a start and uh, see how we go. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, people.